Hey guys, Dan Heilman back with another Dragonair video. Today's gonna be uh, a fairly short video. I want to talk about enlightenment. So I, it's probably like one of the very, very common questions that people ask on Discord. What is enlightenment? What does it do? Who do I need to put it on? How do I get it, etc. So we're gonna go through all of that right here. So if you click the hero tab, and then if you click over here on the stats, it tells you what everything does. Now, it's not, exactly perfect so uh very first thing enlightenment affects derivative damage or directly becomes the coefficient of some skills i'll explain that in a minute increases the hero's derivative damage by 33.6 percent you can see i have 67 so it's basically 50 percent of that is given as a damage bonus on derived damage skills i'll show you who does that um etc later derived damage Derived damage generated by a specific skill gains an enlightenment bonus, but cannot trigger trigger a critical hit. Now, this I'm not a thousand percent set on how this exactly works because I feel like sometimes you have passives that deal derivative damage. So does that mean that hero can't crit at all? I'm not quite sold on that, but if you're building a lot of enlightenment for heroes that do that sort of damage, I probably wouldn't invest as much into crit rate. So, okay, now who uses enlightenment? Um, healers, for example, is one of the number one things that use enlightenment. You can see right here, heals an ally by 150% of attack and 1500% of enlightenment. So if you want to scale the healing of Hexandra, which is a very good rare healer, you want to stack as much attack and enlightenment on her. Now, not all healing scales with enlightenment. So if I go to another healer, let's uh, talk about this healer, for example. She puts recovery over time. Recovery over time does not benefit from any sort of stats. It only benefits from the HP of the target. So recovery over time, if I put it on a tank with a lot of HP, they'll have a higher recovery over time than on a damage dealer who doesn't have a lot of HP. There's no way to scale recovery over time, okay? Um, also, enlightenment works on poisons. Now, it doesn't say it works on poisons, but it does work on poisons. Um, I wish it would say scaled by enlightenment. And you can kind of... This does not say enlightenment here because it's scaling poisons. This means it actually scales the damage of the ultimate. You can see damage modifier, attack, and enlightenment. Because look at this skill here. This skill lands no poisons, yet it says it's scaled by enlightenment. You really need to read the heroes to understand who benefits from enlightenment and who doesn't, right? So you can see right here, he gets a damage bonus from attack and enlightenment, but there's no poison. So regardless of poisons, he still deals more damage with enlightenment. Now, it's kind of weird because it says recharges if it triggers a crit. So he's kind of a weird hero because you want enlightenment, you want crit, and you want attack, and you want accuracy. Um, so kind of a weird hero to build there. But um, yeah, okay. So let's go through just some of the other healers in the game. Um, you can see right here. Heals allies caressed by the wave by attack and enlightenment. So again, you can even see that it says damage modifier, attack and enlightenment as well. So this healer actually deals damage based on attack and enlightenment and heals based on attack and enlightenment. So very important. Again, here's the same thing, enlightenment. Now, I'm trying to think of another healer who doesn't scale from enlightenment. Uh, here we go. So this healer, it says generates a healing nexus around the hero, heals allies within range by 50% of defense. This literally means the only thing that scales that heal is defense. So enlightenment does nothing on him, okay? Uh, even though he's also a poison hero, um, just because he's a poison affinity hero doesn't mean he has poisons, and it also doesn't mean this says deals poison damage. That's kind of confusing because you're not actually placing poisons. You're just dealing damage and he's a poison hero, so it's considered poison damage. You can see damage modifier, attack, no enlightenment. So enlightenment does not help there at all, okay? Um, so we went through enlightenment on damaging skills. We went through enlightenment on healing. We went through it on poisons. Those are the three main reasons you would build enlightenment to scale poisons, to scale things that say they're scaled with enlightenment. And um, again, 
heels that are scaled with enlightenment, okay? Now, another example of that would be, you know, this healer as well. So now let me show you her gear. So you can see, heals allies by targets max HP and enlightenment. So I want a lot of enlightenment on her. So the main places you can get enlightenment, let me move myself over here, is going to be the chest place. Chess piece is the number one place you can get enlightenment. So if, you, if you're ever confused, on what stats roll on what gear. I guess let me put myself in the middle so I'm not in the way constantly. Um, if you're ever curious about what stats roll on what set, uh, I'm sorry, what what piece, what slot, uh, you can see here. So chess can roll enlightenment, okay? It does seem to be very rare because you can say I only have three. Um, it does seem to be quite rare to get enlightened chess. But if you look at every other um, thing, like gloves, for example, if I hit the filter, you can see this is X'd out, saying I cannot roll enlightenment on gloves, okay? I can only roll the rest of these. So you can only get an enlightenment on main stat for the chest and this positive rune. This is the only places you can get enlightenment as a main stat, okay? So um, again, if I go right here and I click this, you can see on this rune, I can get enlightenment, HP, attack, defense, and crit damage, okay? Nothing else. So enlightenment is only available as a main stat on two slots, um, but you can get it on substats as well. So if now if I look at something like this and I click right here, you can see I cannot roll enlightenment on the other rune slot but I can get enlightenment as a substat on basically everything, unless it already has enlightenment as a main stat. You can never have a main stat and a substat that's the same. Can never have that. So you couldn't get enlightenment main stat with enlightenment substat, that's not possible. So if you're trying to scale healers and stuff like that, um, you're gonna want enlightenment plus whatever other stat they benefit from. It's either attack or target HP. Obviously you can't change target HP by gearing your healer, but you can obviously increase their HP. But basically you just have um, enlightenment and then I like focusing on skill haste as a healer. Um, skill haste, enlightenment, if it scales with attack, build attack as well. It kind of sucks when you have an attack scaling healer because you can't really just go full attack on them because then they're too squishy and they can't really survive. So sometimes you got to make some concessions there and you got to maybe go enlightenment chest maybe attack gloves and then try to get a lot of hp substats and your other gear or something to make up for it but again um, you can get enlightenment for all these other heroes um, another really strong damage dealer that scales from enlightenment is flora she is basically one of the exclusive heroes who's very very strong um, i wish i got a copy of her so this girl you build a lot of enlightenment um, and this is the one i was kind of confused on right so it says Every time an ally launches a successful wild, the familiar stays and deals damage, dealing fire damage, okay? Um, this says fire damage, and then this says deals fire damage to enemies, creating a fire whirlpool. While the whirlpool is active, the target takes additional derived fire damage from wild. So, you can see, it cannot crit. So it's kind of weird because you can't crit with enlightenment, um, but yet it also scales their damage. And they can crit with other abilities, it just means that others can't crit. Now, let me show you one final example of damage dealers who scale with enlightenment um, that are kind of weird is um, Filto here. So Filto, his main thing says, launch a basic attack that causes an arcane explosion when it hits an enemy, dealing derived radiant damage to enemies within range. The hero will not get any attack speed bonus, the attack will be covered, blah, blah, blah. So it says attack but it says derived radiant damage that means enlightenment benefits him but if you scale all enlightenment that means he's not going to be able to crit on his autos so crit is not as useful but also none of his other abilities scale with enlighten i'm going to call it enlighten because enlightenment is so long enlighten so you can see this says damage modifier attack it only works on his basic attack. So honestly, I'd probably just ignore Enlighten on him because you want to build him with crit rate and crit damage anyways because he's a hard-hitting AoE nuker. And only his auto attacks scale with derived damage, meaning Enlighten, Enlightenment. You can see here, it gains an Enlightenment bonus but cannot trigger a crit. So if I build him with 100% crit, then his auto attacks, if they deal enlightened damage or derived damage they're not going to crit so it's kind of weird for this guy i would just build him crit and crit damage so that's kind of the full explanation on enlightenment there's um a lot of questions that people ask about enlightenment so i just want to make a video about this um 
I hope that's clear for everyone. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's going to be it. Have a great day, everyone. See you guys.